back to my channel it is christian here and you're tuned in for more of my two cents now this is a quick drop-in video because i did post a short last week mentioning that i would do a video about the jamal bryant and the kevin samuels saga um that honestly should not be a thing but it is a thing and since i give my two cents on all things churchy yeah, it was only right that I weigh in. So our three points before I get started in every video, I always like to say, number one, you are not alone. Number two, you are not crazy. Number three, God still loves you. So let's get into it. We all have heard about the Jamal Bryant and the Kevin Samuels debacle, the late Kevin Samuels debacle. Um, and I, I just, I'm approaching this from the standpoint of it being clout chasing, right? I think a lot of us can agree on what clout is. It's being high and lifted up right it's being influential powerful impactful an influencer um and being out there in the news like in the media in the forefront oprah has clout tyler perry has clout td jakes has clout joe osteen has clout the obamas have clout all of these are people who when you say their names people immediately know who they are beyonce clout jay-z clout now when you're a clout chaser Clout chaser, you're, you're always pursuing connection, validation, information in any situation that aligns you with people who have clout. You're consistently chasing it, right? You see that with people all the time. It happens. You want to be connected with those people. You are always talking about those people. You're always involving yourself in things or using their names for clout. You want clout too, and to be connected with them will elevate you, whatever that looks like. And so that's how I felt, um, and I use past tense because I don't care, but that's how I felt when it first happened with the Jamal Bryant situation where he talked about the late Kevin Samuels in the pulpit at church on the stage. I ain't calling these pulpits no more. These are stages. <clears throat> so, um, Jamal decided that he was going to take a part of his sermon and tell to women in the congregation at new birth about women. I mean, about men who either deserve to be submitted to or not submitted to right men of value, men of status, um, that you should want to be connected with and that who or that will take care of you, provide for you, protect you um, and all of these things. And I have to tell you that it kind of reminded me of the situation with the pastor who spit in the other guy's face on stage, uh, Michael Todd. It reminded me of that. Um, some things are for shock and awe effect. And a lot of the things with some of these celebrity pastors are for that effect they don't really want to be impactful they don't really have any value or hold any weight they just want to be seen they just want to be attached with the current up-to-date topics um trends they want to be in media and that's how they do it and that's how jamal has really branded himself and that's how he's been able to rise in my opinion outside of his um maybe his good actions, right? Maybe some of his um, connections with justice issues, social justice, injustices, and being an advocate for those things. It's like, that's not enough. Like I can't just be on a mission to help people who are done wrong, disenfranchised, underrepresented in the community um, or by the nation. I got to attach myself to things <laughs> for whatever reason to draw people into church. And it's gimmicky. It's, it's giving gimmicks, right? It's giving um, slick car salesmen, like oily, greasy, ugh, stay away from me kind of, you know, vibes because it is attached to church. Um, I wouldn't have an issue and I wouldn't be weighing in if this was anybody else on social media who decided to put their mouths on Kevin Samuels. I wouldn't care. Like, I wouldn't have said anything about it, but it's Jamal. He's a pastor. You have your own influence over your congregation. And you decided 
that in order to appeal to the masses, the women who may not have liked Kevin Samuels, you decided to appeal to them. And honestly, in my opinion, in your flesh, it was a fleshly move to really get on the good side of people. And you decide to bash a man that's no longer here to defend himself at church. And what gets me is, it's not that Kevin was church related or church affiliated. This man had no affiliations with anything spiritual at all, to my knowledge. And you literally brought this individual's um, content to the pulpit, to the stage. I'm sorry, to the stage and put that, if you will, on the chopping block of it all. And it's okay to want to be relevant, to want to be authentic, to want to be relatable. Not a problem. However, I feel like it's disingenuous when you're standing there with more receipts on your life present day. More transgressions on your life present day than anything that that man could have said or done just on video. Do y'all see what I'm saying here? It's like... People want to have clouded judgment about who's chasing cloud or who's doing who wrong because you side with what the person is saying against the person you don't like. I don't I don't know much about Kevin Samuels. OK, yeah, we've all seen some of the clips and the videos and heard some of the harsh, disrespectful, rude tone delivery and, and comments that he's made to women and men. But I have to tell you that that was on a public forum and platform of his social media never in a pulpit or on a stage in front of a congregation there's a difference here people come to church to hear the gospel you have an entire book you have an entire bible available to you a lot of stories to use and you went and got content from social media and youtube so what does that do that opens you up to the opinion of everybody? That's why when, a, when I did a quick Google search of Jamal Bryant and Kevin Samuels, all of these articles came up from The Shade Room, BET.com, Radar Online, Bossup.com, Baller Alert, Madame Noir, Moguldom, The Jasmine Brand, All About the Tea, SandraRose.com, all of these websites, ice cream combos, tiktok.com, your name is now even more Googleable than before for the other transgressions that you've had, the dirt that's out there on you. You don't, you're, you don't want to face that stuff. You're not in pulpits telling women not to date a man like you. You're not in pulpits standing up telling them I'm trash. I'm toxic. I get you pregnant and leave you. I'll get you pregnant and not marry you. I'll get you pregnant and act like your kid don't exist. Right? I like to dibble and dabble and, and, and roll around in a haystack with housewives just to get checks and to clear my name and to still be in the media. It's the clout for me because Giselle has clout. He has clout too. So that's when it becomes, mm, it becomes an agreement. It becomes an understanding. It becomes a pact. A P-A-C-T. It becomes a pact to roll together, right? To come together in order to help each other's stars rise. Connection for the purpose of elevation. That's clout. It's gaining clout, but it's also clout chasing. I want more of that. I want more power, more influence. So I get that by connecting myself with those who have it, with those who may not be in a good light right now. I can get on the right side of this. If I talk down on this person, you didn't have to say anything about that man at church. You didn't. Now, if you were just a public speaker, if you were just a man who gave advice to women, or if you were a mentor or a life coach or a relationship co coach or, or expert, I wouldn't have cared if you wanted to put your mouth on this man, but it's the fact that you invited th his being, his content, his, his belief system, you trashed it at church for no reason. There, there was no reason to correlate the two, but you did it for clout. You wanted to be associated with it and you got that. Now, the apology that he issued, I watched that video too. And 
Great apology. I have nothing to say about his apology. Like, I'm not going to trash somebody apologizing. What I will say is you wouldn't have had to apologize for giving misinformation to the masses because everybody was hooping and hollering with you and cheering you on and rooting for you because they didn't like Kevin at all. They hated this man, right? So, of course, people were clapping and, woo, yes! To, they were doing that for you with you because they didn't like him nobody cared about the facts so for you have to come back and retract that you put out information that was false that you stood in in front of thousands of people and then went viral in front of millions of people spreading misinformation about someone who's not here again to defend themselves and you had to be checked on it and then you had to come back to the same stage in front of the same audience and apologize about a man you didn't have to even put your mouth on in the first place. Because he had nothing to do with the Bible. You see what I'm saying? When, when it comes to scripture and it comes to real life, people lack good logic in judgment. The same Bible or the same scripture you thought you were like expounding upon to talk about this grown man who had a YouTube channel, not a ministry, not a church. He had a following, but he wasn't your competition. You didn't say nothing about him while he was alive, but you felt the unction and the audacity. Okay. You felt the audacity to get up and to throw more dirt on an already deceased individual for your own selfish game. And these are the people that we are clamoring to lead us into the promised land, whatever that may be or look like. But you got to come back and repent. You have to come back and apologize. You have to come back and present an, uh, uh, an official statement and release a statement to retract something that you so boldly said. I think it's dangerous that platforms such as church can be used to um, gain more popularity by bashing people who are not church related. The principles in church do not affect those who don't believe them. Kevin didn't live by the scripture. Kevin didn't care about the Bible like that. What he was talking about had nothing to do with what you were talking about. You were trying to bring the two together in a totally different environment and it didn't work. It had no place. Now, I'm not a Kevin supporter and I'm not a Jamal Bryant hater. What I am is logical. It just didn't have any place on that in that platform, in that environment. And you could have done yourself a greater service, right? To actually just speak to the women from the heart and talk about some of your transgressions and how you've gotten better and how you appreciate the women who have supported you and gotten your career to where it is. Because it's a career. It ain't a ministry. It's a career. Every move that this man has made has been to advance himself as an individual. As a personal brand and entity. Let's be very clear here. And we've watched it on multiple platforms. From TV. Right? To being connected to people in the music industry. Sexually. Um to the abuse of power over women in the ministry that you're called to. Getting new birth was a power move. He put in an application and interview for that. There were several pastors who put in for new birth because it was going to be a power move in their pastoral career, okay? Let's just call a thing a thing and be done with it. But we don't want to have those conversations. It's easier to bash people who aren't even church affiliated. Stop putting, stop um, deflecting. Let us no longer deflect. Let us course correct. Let's go ahead and put him in the judgment seat since he put somebody in the judgment seat who never came and had a seat in his ministry. Keep the same energy. Talk about you. Are you a man worth submitting to? Are you a man worth following? Are you a man worth caping for? Right? Would somebody be okay with being seen in the light with you as much as the dark? Because you plan on keeping everybody in the dark. 
Are you apologizing to anyone you've hurt or led astray? No, probably not. You don't even have to. That's not for us to choose. But my, my point is here, you did it to somebody else who never did it to you. He wasn't bothering you. This man wasn't bothering you. But you came for him because you knew it would get you clout. That's, that's just my take. That's my two cents. That's my two cents. I don't talk. I, if I was a pastor, I wouldn't talk about people who aren't church affiliated. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't care about issues and topics and conversations that don't correlate to like the center of it all. Like if there's a mission and we're supposed to be directing people, like why not focus on that? Like, is God not enough? Is that getting old and boring? You remember his message, right? Where he literally put himself Oh my goodness. As the Black Panther on a damn flyer. Y'all don't remember that? This man had a Black Panther graphic when the Black Panther movie was popular. This man also said these hoes ain't loyal doing a sermon in relation to the Chris Brown song. We're really doing this? This is the epitome of clout chasing. It's okay if you don't agree. It's okay if you think that I'm clout chasing, but I, I guarantee you one or two things. I will not be using Kevin Samuels' name in the title of this video because I'm not going to clout chase off that man's name. Now, call me a clout chase of putting Jamal Bryan's name in the, in, in the uh, title. I do not care. But this is a clarion call for some of y'all to just open your eyes and say, why do we keep on putting certain people on pedestals that only seek popularity from outside sources? Y'all support ain't enough for this man. He's out here going after other people who don't have church affiliation, who aren't spiritual at all. We're his spiritual advisors to hold his feet to the fire. Even people who are spiritual, who speak on Jamal, it doesn't matter because he has the support of, of some folks who just want to be connected. Nobody's holding him accountable. And the apology which I'm sure Kevin Samuels' family appreciates, still doesn't help the fact that you are now on record trashing a man who could not rebuttal. You took content from YouTube. You took videos that he literally uploaded with live participating adults, consenting adults. You took content that you watched and decided to trash it in public. Not on your YouTube channel, but in church. It had no business being talked about in church. That's not discussion that should be expounded upon in church. No place. It had no place. That's just me. That's my two cents. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know where we go from here. It doesn't really matter. I'm sure he'll do it again in another couple of months when something else pops up and is popular. He seems to not be able to be tamed. It works because it's salacious. It brings more attention and views to the church and to him as an individual. This is now his MO. This is how he operates. This is how he gets down. This is what he takes pleasure in doing. And people clearly like it. And that's okay. I hope New Birth stays in business, stays open, and they can keep the light on for you like at Motel 6. Okay? Because clearly somebody wants to hear it. So I'm not doubting that at all. But what I am saying is that the more that we get people like him power, privilege, and platform, the less people actually learn on how to develop the tools and the resources to strengthen themselves, even when, right? Even when they're not surrounded with others who can tell them the truth. And this is where we have a problem. Nobody can put their mouth on the man of God. And that was definitely sarcasm. Now I think about it far closest. That was sarcasm in my short when I said that he put his mouth on the man of God, Kevin Samuels. I My toxic trait is definitely being facetious. But clear, it was lost on a lot of people. The man of God. I said it like that on purpose, like mocking how people in church talk, but whatever. I know Kevin Samuels is not a man of God. I do not believe that by any means. I don't even believe that Jamal is a man of God. That's why he was facetious, but I digress. Thank y'all for tuning in for my two cents. Drop your, your thoughts below. Do you think that he had a right or he should have mentioned a worldly influencer in the pulpit? Do you think that Kevin Samuels' name should have even been mentioned in that service? Was it necessary?
Take everything else out of it. Take your feelings and emotions out of it. Should that man's name been mentioned in church? Was it necessary and effective? Or did it only tinkle and sprinkle and tickle the ears of those who didn't like Kevin Samuels on his platform? Which would make it cloud chasing. Okay? All right. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. I will catch you guys in the next one for more of my two cents. Bye.